Oh. Welcome to Extronical. Today we're going to look at one of these little small uh, heartbeat sensors that you can get for around um, two pounds, two dollars, two euros, whatever, it's around that. Um, extremely cheap. Uh, they do have um, some issues with them, which I'll mention later on, um, but they're also actually, I find, to be quite accurate. Little disclaimer, they are not uh, medical devices, so don't rely on this if you've got any sort of um, worry about your health then you need to go and see a doctor and not consult uh, with a, a YouTube video that's displaying a heart sensor that's on a cheap Arduino so that aside uh, they come with uh, three wires well I'll just turn that over there's a little bit of circuitry on the back um, we'll explain what that does uh, in a little minute but basically the sensor is on this side uh, when we plug it in you'll see there's a yellow sorry yellowy green um, LED that shines here um, but what we're looking at there's an infrared sensor on this um, device here as well and an infrared emitter now what that does is it actually shines an infrared beam so what your idea is is you put your finger on there where the heartbeat is so you put your finger on and under your skin uh, are tiny capillaries uh, veins arteries that actually transport your blood around your body. Uh, that shines quite brightly through your skin with the infrared and it reflects off one of these capillaries and the reflection, reflected infrared goes back to the um, infrared sensor in there. Now, every time your heart beats, every time it pumps, it um, gives it an extra push of blood. Now, that extra push of blood ever so slightly expands your capillaries in your um, finger throughout your body but ever so slightly they actually get a little bit of a surge of blood when they do they actually reflect slightly more infrared now it is minute but um, they've got a comparator on here which will be this chip here I haven't really looked but they'll have a comparator which um, will magnify for the sake of it saying it in any other way will magnify the differences in infrared so when the heart's not pumping there'll be a certain amount of reflecting infrared and when it does pump then there'll be an extra bit of a surge of infrared reflected, slightly more infrared reflected back into the sensor. That picks it up, amplifies it, and sends it down, that difference down a signal wire there. So it only has three wires. We've got um, red is positive on this one. They've supplied them with um, grey, red, and blue. So red is positive, blue is uh, ground, and grey is your signal. Um, on the actual device itself, they're clearly labelled on the one I bought. Um, uh, as to which is which, so negative, positive, and I think they put S for signal there as well. So we'll show you where you plug it in. So rather surprisingly, the positive will go to the Arduino's 5 volts, which is there. You'll notice I've also got a display hooked up. Let's push that in. Um, I'm not going to go into how this is displays uh, wired up or how we um, access it or program it. That's in another video. I'll put um, a little link on now. It'll be coming up now. Um, so you can set that all up in that separate video if you've not already done so. But basically, we'll be measuring your heartbeat and displaying a uh, beats per minute here at the bottom and also a, a trace, an ECG trace. Obviously, it's not technically an ECG. So that's electrocardiograph. This is not using electrocardiograph techniques. It's using a reflected infrared, but sake of argument it'll give you a little ECG trace on there so that's the positive connected up to the 5 volts of the Arduino and the ground going to the ground and the signal we just connect to A0 you could connect it to any of the analog ports that you wanted to um, I've just chose A0 um, so basically yeah it gives you an analog output so I think these work for anything from 3 to 6 volts something like that you can look up the specs exactly but basically it will work with an Arduino uh, or some of the other 3.3 volt microcontrollers and this will return a range for the infrared that it's got of between 0 and 1024 
And the way this one works, and I can guess they all work the same with the comparator, uh, when you first power it up and it's got no particular uh, difference in infrared, it settles around 512, around half the range, 0 to 1004. So it settles at about 512, and then when you get an increase in infrared, it rises up from 500 to 600, whatever it might get to. And we'll have a look at the software for quickly testing this, and also we'll have some software to display on the display as well. Okay, so we'll move on, we'll uh, get the software into the uh, RDE, and we'll have a quick play with that. Okay, so the code that you can use to basically just simply check your device is extremely simple. We'll write it on the fly now as we go. Um, you're going to use something called a serial plotter to see your results, as what, what will look like a nice sort of ECG. Um, Usually you'd use serial monitor for most of your things when you're doing tests and initial uh, checking of equipment. So serial monitor would just come up like that and you get a load of whatever results you're printing back. However, if you open up um, serial plotter, it will actually plot along here a waveform, well not, will be a waveform, it will plot as a graph whatever value you pass back over that serial port. So that's what we're going to do. So in the setup, we need to make sure we're using the serial and at the speed of 9600. That's the setup done. And then we just need to um, print out to the serials, serial port. It's important to use print line because the serial plotter looks for the end of the line to then know that the number that was just before it is the number you want to plot. So I'm going to print to the port the analog, um, not like that, just move the cursor out of the way, analog read for port zero, analog port zero, which is what we, we connected the device up to on the Arduino. That is it. It's two basic lines of code. Uh, there is another tweak we're going to put on in a minute, but we'll just see if we can get that working. So we'll upload. Wants me to save it, so let's save it as heartbeat like that. Maybe heartbeat simple. I'm just compiling, uploading. Shouldn't take too long, there's hardly anything to it. And uploaded. So now we just want to open the serial plotter. Let's have a look. And there we go, got a trace moving along. I'm not sure why it's suddenly gone like that. It's never done that before. I'm going to put my uh, finger on it anyway and see if it settles it down. So I'll put my finger on the, yeah, that's it, that's settling down. So I'll put my finger on it. Let's see if we can get a result. See, every time I move, this is one of the things I was going to talk about. If you move your finger ever so slightly with these devices, and you can see my heartbeat fairly clearly there now. The reason it moves up and down is because the serial plotter is just trying to scale it to the values that you are sending. The trace is not very, very clear there, um, but we'll alter it just to make it a little bit of an improvement. So we'll just close that down. <clears throat> the only improvement I'm going to do is, this is running really fast, plotting as fast as it can. It's too much, it goes across the screen, it's not very realistic, it's not easy to see. So we'll just put a little delay in it, and yeah, lots of people say, don't use delay, the command delay, use milliseconds. Well, for such a simple example, no. For such a simple example, I'm using a delay. So we're delaying it for about 20 yeah, milliseconds. I'll upload that one. Uploading. And it's done, so we'll open up the serial plotter again, and we should get something that's... Um, a little easier to see and key because it's going slower we can see the trace uh, a lot easier um, it seems to be picking up almost a perfect heartbeat without anything being pressed on but let's put my finger on nice and gently and keep it nice and still and we'll watch the trace of my heartbeat and you should be able to notice where it is beating Which you can, it's those high peaks. And that looks okay, uh, but we want to know the beats per minute as well. So I wrote some software that will actually uh, display it onto this small screen here. 
uh, as an RCCG, so it's more self-contained than having to open up this uh, serial plotter which jumps all about with its scaling. Um, because I when, I when I did the initial investigation to this, I know what sort of range of values we're going to get back. And we can scale an RCCG onto this display with a Beats PM as well. So we'll just go and get that from the Ardu uh, the Extronical uh, website. So if you go onto the Ar Arduino website, you'll see that there's a blog post um, being added for the um, heartbeat display for the heartbeat sensor where you'll find all the source code and a more detailed sort of talk about it so we'll click in there and here you'll find me basically doing what I'm talk, you know writing what I'm talking about in the video so some screenshots and how the sensor works connection diagrams uh, simple source code which we've just done there and what we want is a more advanced source code with the display so we've got the display as I said um, there's another tutorial about how to wire that up which I, I put a link in earlier and here is the code so the code for the um, graphical display in the Beats PM is not very long again it's very simple um, we'll copy that out and we'll put it into our RDE so just get out of the way right so we'll just copy down there Control C get rid of that and we'll just select all and delete it all and just paste in the code that we've just done. Although we can't paste the code in we've just done. Does it didn't do it? I think <laughs> what you have to do, you can't just highlight it and copy it like that. I think we have to select one of these. Yeah, you've got to click there. So when you've highlighted it, uh, rather than control C it doesn't work, you've got to go there, copy it. So control C to copy. Now you can do control C. Okay. And then we'll paste it into that code. There we go. And we'll upload that. And we should see the display come to life with a trace coming along the bottom. <clears throat> okay, so nearly finished compiling. Uploading. And there we go. So, zero beats PM, somebody's not very well, but you've got a nice sort of flattish trace going along and we'll put my finger on a minute and we can see the, the results of what comes out. So we'll just study that, you'll see it jump about. Okay, so I'll put my finger on it and we'll see if we can get a trace. There you go, nice steady trace. It's very interesting to watch. You've got obviously your beats per minute, which varies um, almost every second for your heart, which is quite natural. If you go into hospital, you'll see it jump about a fair bit. Uh, mine tends to be around 70 or so. Uh, when I talk, you can notice it actually goes up on average a little bit. And the trace, it's very interesting to watch actually the, even the low parts, you know, not the peaks, have a very similar shape as the blood pumps through and the heart pumps to a very definite rhythm rhythm for your body. Um, I'm no doctor. I'm sure there's something to be revealed in those tiny little bumps that are very regular between the high peaks of the actual uh, pulse. We're not going to look too deeply into how the cord works. A good strong pulse there. Um, I'll quickly uh, whiz through it, show you some highlights, but I'll leave you to look through it. It's not that long. Um, and you can see, as I've been talking, averaging 80 odd now, so I'll stop talking and see if I can bring my heartbeat down a bit. What an amazing difference uh, being quiet is. Um, so if I start talking again, you can see, yeah, we're having up, going up into the 80s again. Um, one of the problems with these sensors, they're great for this. It's doing a reasonable job. It's nice to see the trace. If you slot and move your finger a little bit, which is what I'm doing now, you can see it jumps about massively. So even me, and I've tried strapping this on with some Velcro and some sellotape. If you press too tightly, if you strap it on too tightly, which I'll, so I'm going to apply some pressure with my finger down onto the sensor now, so it's quite tight. So that's what I've done. I've pressed down on the sensor so it's tight. And obviously what you're doing, you're restricting blood flow in those capillaries. You're squeezing them. And that's the result we get. We get a flat line trace. So, and if you let off too much pressure, pressure, sorry, it's settle. 
and it jumps all over the place with the slightest movement of your finger. So getting the pressure right is something you could do with um, there you are, so pressure. You just need to relax and just press it on gently, but not too firmly. Um, but if you were jogging with this, so imagine if I'm going to move it like that as if I'm jogging, then no, it's all over. So you couldn't really use it, I don't think, if I'm just rocking the sensor. I mean, it's not too bad, but you can see the, the peaks jumping about there just by a gentle rocking. If I was sort of exercising, you can see that it's absolutely all over the place. If I was running down the street, that'd be useless. Uh, so you can't really use it as a constant heart rate monitor if you're doing exercise. What you could do is measure your resting heartbeat, do some exercise then, come and put your finger on the um, trace, on the sensor, sorry, and measure um, your then heartbeat just after you've exercised and maybe how long it takes you to, to return to um, your resting heartbeat. So you could do that. Okay, so moving back onto the chord a bit, just very, very quickly, not going to spend a lot of time going through this. I'm certainly not going to go through some of the graphics routines, that's been discussed in my Space Invaders series quite a lot. But basically, we're initialising the display, clearing the display, setting the text size, uh, then we come around to our main loop, and um, first few lines, if X is more than 127, basically just saying if you've gone past the end of the screen, so... If we've got to the end of the screen, we're just resetting back to the beginning of the screen. And that's all that's doing. It's plotting X and going across. Um, setting some colours. Um, the Y is to do with the B, um, how high the trace is for the heartbeat. And we're going to a calculating BPN. Uh, the upper threshold is basically we will start looking at the start of a heartbeat when it goes past a certain upper threshold. And then we'll say a heartbeat is completed when it's gone below a lower threshold. Uh, and we are actually timing the heartbeats per minute. And we'll calculate a BPM with some simple maths here. Uh, this line does that. But it's some relatively simple maths. Um, so you can have a look at that, see if you can work out how it works. Um, and that is it really. We just display it on the screen and we can go back and back. We don't have a delay in this. We don't have a delay 20 or anything you notice at the end of this loop. Because right into the display, this line that writes the display, actually texts around that time a little bit more perhaps. Um, so it's, it's natural on display, and in fact, the natural speed of right that display actually gives a very satisfying speed across the display, um, which looks very realistic and very natural. So by luck, that all worked out quite well. So that's the end of this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like and subscribe. Have a look at some of my other episodes as well. And until next time, see you later.